طيب If a person stop paying the zakah or say I will never pay the zakah or I'm not gonna give my money to anybody and they challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then those people will also leave Islam and they will become murtaddeen and Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiyallahu an the first khalifa after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually fought those who stopped paying the zakah and forced them to pay it because that's part of religion and that's one of the pillars of Islam so we must all pay our zakah if we accumulated the fund and for the specified amount of time we must pay it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's mandatory if you have it the next one in this hadith is Hajjul Bayt is basically going and performing pilgrims and pilgrimage to Mecca to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al Masjid Al Haram the holy mosque in Mecca and again same thing with the zakah I will not be going into the details of Hajj and how it's performed that would be a subject of a lecture on its own by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but establishing Hajj is mandatory on every Muslim and Muslima who have the capability and ability to perform it physically financially and if they have the transportation and if they have the health of course so they have to be healthy they have to be wealthy have enough money for the transportation and all that and they have to have reached puberty they have to be adults to consider Hajj al-Fard the mandatory Hajj so Hajj is mandatory and it's one of the pillars of Islam that is required on every Muslim male or female to do if they have fulfilled the conditions the physical ability the financial ability and reaching puberty and adulthood those are the conditions prior to performing the Hajj and of course make sure that when you're going to Hajj your money is clean and pure you did not steal it you did not accumulate it from interest and riba billah, and don't play Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go use riba for your own personal things and then go save the halal money to go to Hajj don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't ever dare and do that many Israel the Jews Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them during Musa alayhi salam's time do not fish on Friday it was a test to them they went and put their nets in the sea on Saturday they came and collected the nets on Sunday and they told Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oh Allah we obeyed you we did not fish on Saturday who are they trying to fool Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them do not fish on Saturday Obviously, when you're putting your nets on, uh, on, on Friday and collecting it on Sunday, don't you think that some of the fish got stuck in the net on Saturday? Obviously. But that's how horrible they were toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, I'm not going to use the riba money. I'm going to use the halal money for the hajj and I'll use the riba money for my uh, you know, uh, trip uh, for the... Uh, a plane ticket or for my food or for my clothes or for the gift don't play with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or you will regret it by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and last one in this hadith is Sawmu Ramadan fasting the month of Ramadan or fasting Ramadan Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic calendar that comes by the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after Sha'ban and it's an amazing and a beautiful gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us and it was a test to us and basically all we have to do in the month of Ramadan by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that we are required to fast and stop from eating and drinking and doing other things that we're not supposed to do during those times from prior basically at Fajr time before uh, the sunshine until the sunset once the sunset then you can return to your food and drink according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessing upon you but bottom line is that's what we're required of we're supposed to restrain ourselves from eating drinking and other things during those hours <coughs> for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order and following the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi instruction into the fasting and all the details of it and also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want us to remember the poor and needy and hungry around the world by actually feeling that because if you look at us specifically now too most of us don't feel hunger look at us 
Astaghfirullah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for all the things that we've done. We eat, we drink, even if we're not hungry, we eat too much, and we all do. Because it's a shahwa, it's a temptation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for that, but we do it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted us to really go through hunger in Ramadan so we can remember our dear brothers and sisters in Islam who are hungry or starving throughout the world. Whether they are in Somalia, Africa, Morocco, everywhere in the world there are poor, needy, hungry people. So once we feel the way they feel, then that will be a lesson to us and we will really become more generous because we felt that hunger all of a sudden, we felt that pain, we felt the headache, we felt the thirst. And it also make you appreciate the na'mi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more. It make you appreciate the, the water that you drink, the food that you consume. When we're used to eating steak and potatoes and meat and, and all those, you know, f good food all day, we don't appreciate it as much. It becomes, we become bored with it. Well, I'm not craving this. I'm craving that. I don't want this. No, I don't want that. I want pizza. No, I don't want pizza. I want fried this, fried that. We're always picky. We become picky. Because we're not appreciating the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us with all those variety of food and fruits and vegetables. We take, we take it for granted. Some people who are hungry, they, they don't even taste the meat, not even once. Maybe once a year in Eid al-Adha if somebody gives them some meat. Other, other than that, they're eating plain rice or plants or whatever they can. Even tree leaves sometimes when they're starving. So Ramadan makes you appreciate all those gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Makes you appreciate it. Makes you more thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we must all fast Ramadan according to the description of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the information of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam properly for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the pure intention to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is mandatory on every Muslim, male or female, once they reach puberty, if they are healthy enough to do. If a person is ill or sick and not able, then they, they can break that fast, but they will have to actually pay kafara, pay basically money according to the Prophet ﷺ description to cover that basically. And same with the women during the time of the month or if she's you know pregnant or nursing and she's not able, she have to make it up. And once again, I will not be getting to the details of fasting and siyam, but we will be talking about it one of these days by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, give us the power and the ability and we live until then. Tayyip. So we're finalizing this by mentioning the pillars of Islam once again. The first pillar of Islam according to this hadith in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the one he taught to us is that Islam was built on five pillars, foundation to become Muslim, to build Islam on. The first one is the testimony of faith, al-shahadatayn, or al-shahadatayn, shahadatu an la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad al-abdu wa rasuluh, testifying that there is no God worthy of worship or deserve to be worshipped except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and testifying and believing that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is the last servant and final prophet and messenger sent to mankind by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 